It's time now to review headlines in today's newspapers, and of course, I'll be doing that with Kaudi Akitemi. And as always, we'll start first with this day, the newspaper of record, uh, where the lead story says Tinubu prepares for war in Niger Republic, seeks approval of Senate, and the riders echo as defense chiefs, military action plan ready. ACF Northern Senators won against intervention. Coup plotters snub Abdul Salami's team. Cuts ties with Nigeria. Mediators leave Naomi. Uh, Kade, it is the story of the day. No doubt it is the story of the week. You know, yes, there are political stories, as we will see, you know, when we go into the other things. But, uh, and we'll, like we'll find in almost all the other newspapers, uh, the... Looming war is a sort of, con, you know, uh, cause for concern, you know, cause for worry for many Nigerians. And uh, I see that the media is highlighting uh, quite um, deeply the excitation by uh, a number of Nigerians, particularly, you know, people, you know, from the north, uh, saying that war will not be advisable. Um, we heard from what uh, group captain Sadiq Shiu said that, yeah, you know, it's, it's just, uh, it's like a caveat, you know, that they do not mean that they will go to war. They're just saying that if everything fails, um, you know, this can also be on the table. But then when you see that the president is now asking the Senate for approval to deploy, uh, that is not just Ekoa speaking, that is the president of Nigeria uh, seeking approval from the Senate, from the National Assembly in Nigeria to deploy Nigerian troops and ammunition if necessary. Uh, like Group Captain said, yes, maybe you have 10 from Ghana, one from Bene Republic, uh, one from Togo if they're able to afford it, you know, and uh, the Gambia, you know, a few other countries, Senegal, which is dealing with his, with his own issue. Uh, Cote d'Ivoire, where Ouattara is spending, you know, is that firm against, you know, the constitution, you know, uh, which is about what people say that when you condemn uh, coups, uh, coup d'etat also condemn constitutional coups, those who get into power uh, are now flouting the constitution, trying to change it midway. Mm. Um, you know, it, it's, this, these are just unsettling times, Andy. Well, very unsettling times, and um, I am... I don't mind if the president is making all these moves, but like a number of people have said, if the president is making these moves as president of Nigeria, but at the same time he is motivating and inspiring and driving the rest of ECOWAS to do the same, mm -hmm. I haven't seen any sign that Ghana is already asking for permission from its uh, National mm -hmm. Assembly, from its <laughs> parliament. Uh, to get the military engaged in a fight against Niger. I haven't heard that. And there are other parts of um, ECOWAS. They also have to be making those moves. Because if it is only Nigeria that is seen as having its president insisting, yeah. let's get our soldiers ready, yeah. then it will look like this is a war between Niger and Nigeria. And we don't want that war. We don't want that. That's not the war we want. Mm -hmm. But if ECOWAS is saying we're standing our ground as a unified force, we're going to push aggressively, mm -hmm. that will be a lot more threat for Niger Republic. That's right. And it will be a lot more threat mm -hmm. for Mali and Burkina Faso and others, and it will send the right signal to the rest of Africa yeah. that this is not going to be allowed and there is a new sheriff in town in, in the person of President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu mm. who is saying no more coups, we will not tolerate it, and everybody is falling in line. But the key thing for me yeah. is that diplomatic move, Channel, the yeah. charm offensive yeah. Yeah. has got to come from the President of the Federal Republic mm -hmm. of Nigeria. Yeah. We should be seeing him on a consistent basis, uh, walking the phones, talking mm -hmm. to other African heads of States, yeah. coordinating and mobilizing them, motivating them to engage, and all of them are talking, and it is clear that he's leading from the front in terms of what he's saying to them mm -hmm. and how they're responding and how they're rallying around. Yeah. If that is not there, it's going to look like this is Nigeria going to war with Niger. Absolutely, and, and people are also worried about what might look like double standards and, and Chad, 
you know, uh, uh, is, 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 is a case in hand, you know, yeah. why is it tolerable? In Chad, not to talk of, you know, Guinea, Burkina Faso, mm. and Mali, and why Niger uh, is such a problem. But like, you know, you say that a few other people tend to believe, oh, this is Tinubu's time, and therefore he doesn't want coups. But we also have to be careful so that we don't appear like some world superpowers, you know, who yes. caught trouble, who want to insist on how people, other people should live their lives, especially when they are not a direct threat, you know, to your, to your territory. All the stories in today's, uh, this day on top of the lead, Obaseki, deputies fight worsens. Shaibu gets caught reprieve on impeachment. And the writer says, deputy accuses governor of using police DSS to pre prevent him from carrying out legitimate functions. I mean, Adam Sushomale must be laughing his head off <laughs> <laughs> at this point. Say, look at the boys that I Kama. brought up. Kama. <laughs> Kama. It's a bitch, isn't it? <laughs> as they say. All the stories on top of the uh, master Tinubu nominates Kiamo, withdraws Kano's nominee, Miriam Shetty. That's on page six of today. And on the window, uh, FG moves to boost generation with 1,350 megawatts Abuja power plant. General Electric, China's CMEC, NMPCL in strategic joint venture. I do hope that works. Let's hope it I works. Hope that let's, works. Hope, let's hope it works. I mean, 1,350 is not like, um, uh, uh, like an El Dorado, yes. but we need that badly, every, given that yes. we can't even get to 7,000 megawatts that we have been dreaming about for years, for years. There's That's, an organizer, there's a company in, uh, in the UK, I'm not advertising them, but they always say every little helps. Absolutely. Every little Absolutely. helps. So yeah. any little trickle yeah. of this that we can we get will be very yeah. useful. And yes. let's hope that the power ministry uh, will uh, get a lot of attention, mm -hmm. you know, under this administration. We are hearing that is the uh, gentleman from Kaduna that might be posted there that's a Rufai uh, because they think that he can get things done. I don't, I, 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 you know, get things done how? What did he get done in Kaduna as far as Southern Kaduna is concerned? But hey, let's give him the chance. <laughs> let's give him the chance. Last but not the least, uh, on the cover of today's, uh, this day's a story on page 10, CBN's Forensic audit underway as we win back investors, president tells World Bank chiefs. I think the president is really very keen about, you know, the CBN. Uh, uh, the, the, the governor, uh, Godwin Emifiele, uh, is under investigation, is in detention, has been tried. Now a forensic um, audit, he says, is underway, which is a brilliant idea. Let's just hope that such foren forensic audits will be extended to all the key agencies of government and that a lot of people are not comfortable with. That is a big part of it. It is good to do forensic audits, but don't do it in one unit because then it will look like you're doing it because you're hunting yeah. uh, one person and that's just the only interest that you have and that's not right. Yep. Uh, let's take a quick look at what's in The Guardian. A war looms in Nigeria's backyard. And that will be a worrying war. ECOWAS defense chiefs vow to restore democracy in Niger Republic. Mm. Uh, Tinubu notifies Senate. Uh, same story as we've got yeah. in uh, this day. Nigeria mm -hmm. shuts border. Yeah. As Ulama Forum urges caution. All right. uh, just below that, uh, resident doctors fault governments no work, no pay policy directive. Mm -hmm. That story is on page three. And um, that story is one that actually deserves to be on the front page of every newspaper uh, because the resident doctors, I think a couple of them were here on a rise a few mm -hmm. days ago to yeah. say that they're going on strike. Yeah. And they are still on, on strike. On strike. And right. no work, no pay policy mm -hmm. will not work for them. So right. that's there. And then the rest of the other stories you can see on the front page. Mm -hmm. uh, Nancy Sime is there. Our very good friend, Cynthia Mbamalu, who's doing great work with... Uh, the CSO, and then visually impaired and journey to fulfill how society can help. You can mm. read all of those stories inside pages of The Guardian. Of The Guardian. And we move on to Saturday Telegraph. Uh, yes, the lead is the same as the other papers. Is on Tinubu mobilizes for war against Niger Republic. You know, stories on page two and, two and four of the paper. But there are a few other stories that are of interest here. Uh, one of them is the one on page four. Kwakwanso backs out of government, government of national unity. President fraternizing with corrupt politicians 
implementing anti-people policies. That's according to Partisol. I'm not sure how uh, Kwakwanso will be feeling at this point. A lot of people felt that he will be, you know, uh, in the cabinet, especially when uh, what came out that uh, former Governor Ganduje will not be on cabinet. Instead, he will be the party chair. But here we are, all the two nominees from Kano State, uh, as words have it, uh, came uh, from uh, the former governor Ganduje yes. uh, leaving uh, Kwakwanso and his NMPP out of the Government of National Unity deal. Uh, let's see how that pans out. And of course, in Edo, Obaseki Shaibu on what part? We already mentioned that from uh, the story uh, earlier. Deputy governor goes to court to forestall impeachment. It's preemptive move by Shaibu. He plans to defect to APC. Uh, it looks like uh, daggers drawn between the two of them. <laughs> <laughs> Godwin Obaseki yes. and Shaibu, you yes. know, two gentlemen yes. who help, you know, defeat their mm -hmm. uh, godfather. But here we are, a lot of people are saying, will Obaseki be uh, totally disposed to handing over power to Shaibu? To Shaibu. You know, oh, to, he will not be stood like by Eric. him. Yes. <laughs> What's the other stories in there? I think, yes, uh, one more interesting story there. 100 doctors vacate residents. Over colleagues' death in elevator, which is uh, that is a which story is a we would love to do. Absolutely, with today. we were Suicide. meant to have a guest yes. today, you know, you know, to speak on mm. that. But yeah. um, it's really so sad, and let's hope that uh, things are being done. I know that the uh, okay. Lagos State House of Lagos State House of, of, of Assembly yes. has uh, formed a committee led by the Deputy Speaker, okay. and um, you know they're looking into it. I hope that heads will roll because yes. that woman, that young lady should not die in vain. in vain. Yes, so let's uh, run through a couple of newspapers uh, very I quickly. Think we just Saturday, have space just for uh, one Saturday so Tribune, yeah. very quickly. War looms in Niger. We've seen that one. ECOWAS ultimatum expires tomorrow. Um, Better days ahead, says Shetty, as Tinubu drops her um, as ministerial appoint, uh, nominee. And um, she's a very fantastic woman, I think, and um, should be encouraged. Nominations open for 2023 Obafemi Aulo Leadership Prize. That is a story that everyone must take a look at. And those are just uh, all the stories that we can look at yeah. today. Yeah.